الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. And continuing with the topic of muhasaba, self accountability, we stated yesterday that muhasaba has three pillars. The first one is to qayas bayna ni'matik wa jinayatik. Is to compare the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to the sins that you have committed or the infractions you have done as a sign of your ingratitude to those blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Number two, and ta'alam anna laka haq wa alika haq. Laka al haq wa alika al haq. فأدي الحق الذي عليك واسأل الله جل وعلا الحق الذي لك that to recognize that you have rights and then there are people that have rights over you give the people that have their rights over you and when they shortchange you or fail you in terms of giving you your rights then just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your rights we live in a time where every soul is concerned about what is for it. <coughs> my rights, my haq, <coughs> my rights. And sometimes we are more concerned about the rights that we have <coughs> as opposed to the rights that other people have over us. And you would rather meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having someone shortchange you in your rights than you having shortchanged someone else in their rights. The Prophet ﷺ was asked by the Sahaba that towards the last days there will be leaders, Muslim rulers, that will be oppressive. And some of the Sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah, afanakhruj alayhim. Shall we revolt against these leaders? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, La bal addu That don't revolt against these leaders. Give them their rights and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the rights that they took away from you or failed to give you. Because you will be asked about the rights that you failed to give someone else while other people will be responsible for the rights that they fail to give to you. Even in our marriages, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَّهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةِ That women have rights similar to the rights of the men that are against them. Women have the same rights that men have in a marriage. The same exact rights. Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma, he said, Inni la as'alu zawjati jami'a haqqi makhafatan an tas'alani jami'a haqqiha. That I don't ask my wife for all of my rights out of fear that my wife will ask me for all of her rights. I don't ask my wife for all of the rights that she owes to me out of fear that my wife will in turn ask me for all of the rights that are due to her. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man kana inda akhihi madlama falyuaddiha qabla an la yakunu dinaran wa la dirham. That whoever has a right that he owes to his brother, let him return that right to him before there comes a day where there will be no bargaining, no dinar wa la dirham. No money will you be able to ransom yourself with, no money to bargain with. The only thing that you will bargain with on Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be your hasanat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Sahaba, Atadruna Mal Muflis, do you know who the bankrupt person is? So some of the Sahaba said, Al Muflis Alladhi La Dinara Wala Dirham. Al Muflis Fina Man La Dinara Wala Dirham. The the bankrupt person amongst us is the one who doesn't have any money, no dinar, no dirham, no currency. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Bal al Muflis man yati yawm al Qiyamah wa qad salla wa sama wa tasaddaqa lakin shatama hadha wa akhadha maal hadha wa dharaba hadha 
فيؤخذ من حسناته يؤخذ من حسناته The Prophet Sallallahu said that the bankrupt person is the one that comes on Yawm Al-Qiyamah وَقَدْ صَلَّ وَصَامَ He fasted, he prayed, he gave sadaqa but he took the right of this one he took the wealth of this one he insulted this one. He infringed on other people's rights. So it will be taken from his good deeds and will be given to someone else. Until when he runs out of good deeds, he has no more good deeds to bargain with, then he will take the bad deeds of other people. He will take the bad deeds of other people. So playing with people's rights is something that we should be very you know afraid of that you have a right and other people have rights over you give other people the right that they have and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the right that you have Abu Darda anhu, the Prophet وسلم, made a special pact the brotherhood between him and Salman al-Farisi Salman al-Farisi went to go visit him and he saw his wife Um Darda mutabaddila dressed in raggedy clothing and Salman asked her ma sha'nuki فقالت أخوك أبو دردا ليس له حاجة في الدنيا يعني لا يؤدي إليها حقها حق الزواج حق أسرية He saw her dressed in raggedy clothing and he asked her Um Darda, what's wrong? Why are you dressed like this? She said because your brother Abu Darda has no concern for the dunya meaning he was not giving her her rights her rights as a wife in the relationship and so when Salman, he met Abu Darda, he was fasting all day and praying all night. To the end of the story, and they prayed Salatul uh, Isha, uh, they prayed Salatul Tahajjud. And after they finished praying, Salman gave Abu Darda some brotherly advice. He said, Inna li rabbika alika haqqa, wa li nafsika alika haqqa, wa li ahlika alika haqqa, fa'a'ati kulli di haqqin haqqahu. He said, your Lord has a right over you. Your body has a right over you. Your wife has a right over you. Give everyone that has a right over you their right. Give everyone that has a right over you their right. فَلَكَ حَقْ وَعَلِكَ الْحَقْ فَأَدِّيَ الْحَقَ الَّذِي عَلِكَ وَاسْقَلَ اللَّهَ جَلَ وَعَلَى الْحَقَ الَّذِي لَكَ That you have a right and people have rights over you. Give everyone that has a right over you their right. And when people fail you or neglect to give you your right, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your right. You can't get in the habit of, well, he didn't give me my right, so I'm not going to give him his right. Because you are not responsible for what he does to you, but you are responsible for what you do to him. And we get very immature at times when we feel that someone doesn't deserve a right, and then we refuse to give them their right. Like giving someone salam. Like giving someone the greeting of salam because I don't like you and you walk past me and I say assalamu alaikum and you don't respond. To refuse to return the salam, number one, is a sin. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that when a greeting is offered to you, then return the greeting with one that is like it or better than it. Allah commanded you to return the greeting of salam. Not only that, when you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, that's 30 hasanat. Assalamu alaikum, 10 hasanat. Wa rahmatullahi, 20 hasanat. Wa barakatuhu, 30 hasanat. 30 good deeds that you just forfeited simply based on some emotion. Because we get very emotional sometimes. So you just forfeited 30 hasanat simply because you didn't want to return to your brother the greeting of salam. Shaking your brother's hand, when you see your brother and to shake his hand, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that when two believers meet each other, and they begin to shake each other's hands, that when they shake each other's hand, the sins fall off of them like the leaves fall off of a tree. So you refuse to shake your brother's hand when you meet him because you are upset with him or you dislike him for some reason and you refuse to shake his hand. You have forfeited yet another opportunity to remove sin from you and to gain hasanat. 
to smile in the face of your brother. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and to akhika sadaqa. To smile in the face of your brother is a sadaqa, it's a charity. Some of us don't have money to give charity. So Islam has, you know, brought in the scope of charity beyond wealth and has extended it even over to good deeds. And you can give charity with good deeds if you don't have money. You don't give sadaqa with your money and you don't give sadaqa with your good deeds. And to muflis, you're going to be bankrupt your muqiyamah. When do you give sadaqa? You don't give sadaqa with your money because we're too stingy. Mali, mali, my wealth, my wealth. Out of fear of poverty. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, as shaytan ya'idukum al faqr wa ya'murukum bil fahsha. The shaytan threatens you with poverty and we are afraid to give our money. And then on top of that, we are afraid to get hasanat or to give sadaqa even with our good deeds. To smile in the face of your brother is a sadaqa. And in ending, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala to show you how mature she was even as a young woman. That even though you are angry or upset with someone, you still give them their haq, you still give them their rights. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Aisha, Ya Aisha, inni la a'lam if anti alayya ghadba with anti alayya radiya. Faqalat ya Rasulullah, kayfa arafta dharik? قَالَ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِذْ أَنْتِ عَلَيَّ رَاضِيَ تَكُولِينَ وَرَبِّ مُحَمَّدٍ وَإِذْ أَنْتِ عَلَيَّ غَضْبَ تَكُولِينَ وَرَبِّ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ فَقَالَتْ آئِشَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَجَلْ أَجَلْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَكِنِّي لَا أَهْجُرْ إِلَّا إِسْمَكِ يعني إني ما دام أنا غضبان عليك أؤدي إليك حقك مع ذلك he said, Aisha, I know when you're angry with me and I know when you are happy with me. She said, how do you know this? He said, because when you are happy with me, you say, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. In your conversation with people, when you have to swear, you say, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. He said, but when you're upset with me, you're angry with me, you say, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. You don't even want to mention my name. And Aisha said, you are absolutely right but I only boycott your name, meaning I still give you your rights. Even though I'm upset with you, even though I'm angry with you, I still give you your rights. I still cook for you. I'm still intimate with you. I still give you every haq that is yours, despite the fact that I'm upset with you. And that is a level of maturity that Aisha had as a young woman, as a young woman, that many of our wives as older women still haven't even been able to master. Many of us as older Muslims who will pride ourselves on I've been Muslim for 20 years if you converted to Islam or I was born and raised Muslim or my father was a sheikh or my grandfather was a sheikh yet and still you have failed and to tahallak bi akhlaq al-Islam you have still failed to adorn yourself with the Islamic character that we are commanded to this is a level of maturity so here again lak al-haq wa alik al-haq أدي الحق الذي عليك وصل الله جل وعلا الحق الذي لك. You have a right, and other people have rights over you. Give people that have a right their right over you, and ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى for the right that they have neglected or failed to give you. And this is the second pillar of محاسبة of self accountability. والله تعالى أعلم وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. والسبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.